Hi there everyone, Mr. Mayor here, and this video will discuss parallel lines with transversals. By the end of it, you want to be able to say, I can solve for missing angle measures using theorems for angles created by parallel lines and a transversal. So we're just going to look at one example, but we have lots of different angles to solve for here. So our directions find all the measures of each angle if the measure of angle 1 is 128 degrees. Use theorems to justify your answer. So we definitely have to make sure that we are doing this for every value we find. We have to have a reason for why we got the answer we got. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Always plug in the information that is given to us in your diagram. So I see the measure of angle 1 is 128 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and put that right here for myself. All right, now at this point, what's really nice with parallel lines is that uh, the four angles that we have created when two lines intersect, those four angles can actually be moved to the four angles up here. Now the reason for that is because uh, parallel lines, since they travel in the exact same direction, what that means is that these four at the bottom must match these four at the top. The ones in the same location are going to be the same value. So first things first, let's go ahead and just figure out these four angles uh, since I already know 128 is the measure of angle 1. If I look for angle 2, the measure of angle 2 is also going to be 128 degrees. The reason for that is because angle 1 and angle 2, these are vertical angles to each other. Okay, so the measure of angle 2 is 128 degrees by vertical angles. Okay, this is what you should be writing for yourself by vertical angles to angle 1. You also want to make sure you tell, uh, specify who this is vertical angles um, with in this example. Okay, so one, the measure of angle 2 is going to be 128 as well. Now to get either 7 or 8, it doesn't matter which one we use, let's say I'm going to use measure of angle 1 again. If I look at 1 and 7, they are creating a linear pair. Above them is a straight line. So since they are making a straight line, they're making supplementary angles. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. So I know that 128 degrees plus the measure of angle 7 is going to be 180, and that is because they are supplementary. They create a linear pair. They create a line above them. Okay. So to solve this, this is just a little equation I have here. 128 plus the measure of angle 7 is 180. You can go ahead and plug in a variable if you would like to for the measure of angle 7 equals 180. And now at this point, I just want to get the x alone. Using PEMDAS, but using PEMDAS backwards, we need to move the 128 to the other side. We're doing opposite operations. So PEMDAS opposite, backwards. So instead of PEMDAS, we're using SADMAP. I need to subtract subtractions and additions before I do anything else. So since they are combined through addition, 128 is positive. I need to subtract it to both sides, and those cancel. So what I'm finding is that the measure of angle 7, x is going to be, uh, let's go ahead and work this one out. If I'm doing a long subtraction, this is a 7, this becomes 10, 2, 7 minus 2 is 5. So this is the measure of angle 7 equals 52 degrees. I go ahead and I plug that in into my diagram, and lo and behold, if I look across, angle 8 is vertical to angle 7 as well. So that means that this must be 52 degrees as well. So I've got that the measure of angle 7 is going to be 52 degrees because that was supplementary to angle 1. So let's say supplementary, you can even say by linear pair, linear pair to angle 1. And in fact, the same reason goes for angle 8. The measure of angle 8 also has to be 52 because it is also a linear pair to angle 1. You could say to angle 2 as well, whichever one you would rather. Now, I'm going to show you something very cool. This is what's really nice about parallel lines. As we said before, I'm noticing that these four angles, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Anytime two full lines intersect, they're creating four angles. So I'm looking at these two, and I'm noticing if I were to pick up all of this information, all of this information that I have here and translate it. Translate means to move, remember, all the way up. I notice that those four angles above have to be exactly the same as what's below. 
So in fact, this is a great way to see you are doing this correctly. I can just take all my values that I had below and shift them in the same locations upwards. Okay. So again, angle eight, I already wrote all my answers over here. Angle eight was 52 degrees. Angle seven was 52 degrees. Angle one was 128 that was given to us. And angle two was 128 by vertical angle. So now I need a reason. So I've got all the answers. I did everything I needed to do. I need to know why now. So if I look at angle five, angle five is 52 degrees. I can use any sort of different kind of angles. So let's go ahead and use our new types of angle theorems we talked about. Let's compare it to angle seven. Angle five and angle seven we're noticing are congruent. They're both 52 degrees. And if I look at angle five to angle seven, they are alternate exterior angles. So I know that alternate exterior angle theorem to angle seven. So angle five is going to be 52 by alternate exterior angle theorem to angle seven. If I look at angle six and angle one, same thing. This is 128 degrees. And again, this is again by the alternate exterior angles theorem. Again, make sure you are listing who it is alternate exterior to. And this is exterior to angle one. If I look at three and four, I notice three is 52. Maybe you want to use, well, we can use angle eight. If I compare angle three and angle eight, these are both 52. And the reason for that, this time they're not exterior, they are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles angles. And this was to angle eight. So don't forget to put that here. And we'll do the same thing for angle four. Angle four is going to be 128. These are congruent, again, because the alternate interior angle theorem states that your angles must be congruent to each other only when they're on parallel lines, though. So don't forget that. To angle two. All right, guys, we answered them all. We have justification. We have our theorems here, and we are good to go. Thank you for tuning in. See you soon.